Today, on Commitment to Truth. See, if you believe in your heart, I used to tell my kids, <clears throat> I used to tell my kids that you'll show me how much you love me by how you care for the things I give you. If I give you a toy and you throw it up against the wall and smash it into pieces, I'm going to think you don't think very much of me. Well, I think God acts the same way. I think we show God how much we love Him by how we care for what He gives us. Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we begin a series titled, Life After Death. You may think that life after death speaks of only when our physical bodies pass away, but what about the life after death here on earth? This is what we call being born again. This sermon series will describe how to live our lives after we have died to ourselves and live a life crucified in Christ. Here's Pastor Ken Jones, teaching pastor at Commitment Church, with today's message. Back when the United States first came to be, okay, people were coming from Europe and England and wanted to come to the New World. However, they couldn't afford it. So they'd go to some rich guy and say, hey, if you pay my passage, on the ship going over to the New World, I will pay you, I'll get a job over there and I'll pay you back. I will be your servant until you're paid back. Bond servant. And that person was bonded to that person who paid the price for the passage to the New World. Most of the time for the rest of their lives. Jesus Christ paid the price for our passage to heaven. And we owe him a debt. And that's the concept of the bond servant that we're talking about here. The difference is, in this one, we voluntarily take the position of slave to Christ. And because we do that, we have no rights, and we have no will of our own. What does that mean? Well, if I choose to do something that I want to do without it being what's it's in God's will then means I have the right to choose that. Yes, I do. But I'm telling you, the way is death. What we need to be is a bondservant to Christ who's obedient to his will. Which, of course, we're not going to know what it is again unless we're back in the owner's manual. Second point, it's a life perfected by trials. In James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It says, consider it all joy, my brother, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to pretend that trials are pleasant or I'm having so much fun in this trial. No. Remember, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Right. Happiness is, you know, smiley, laughy. <laughs> Joy is just that inner feeling that you get because you know how the story ends. So there's no reason to really get ourselves all worked up about the trial that we're in because we already know how the story ends. Look, if you're a believer, then your job is to have an eternal perspective on this life. Because we're not living this life for this life. We're living this life for eternity. See, one day we're going to stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat. And at that judgment seat, we're going to give account for everything we've done for him. Nothing else. So everything you do, if it's not done for him, when you stand before him on your way into heaven, will not be there. It won't matter how big your car was, how big your house was, how many kids you had. None of that stuff matters unless it's done for Jesus Christ and him alone. And that's the whole point of this. This life that we now live, we live for Christ, not for ourselves. Because for eternity, we're going to live with him. 
James tells us that this life is a vapor that passes away. And you've heard me explain this before. It's like walking outside in the wintertime and you exhale and that little piece of breath comes out and then goes away. That's what this life is like compared to eternity. We are going to live forever with Jesus Christ. Why are we worried about this life? Why do we get ourselves all wrapped up in it? Look, I've had over 120 chemo treatments. And if God decides to take me home tomorrow with my cancer, yippee! Because it's his will. I'm not saying it's not going to be sad. Of course, he tells us to mourn with those who mourn and weep with those who meet. Of course, it's sad when you separate from loved ones. But eternity. It's like they're going away for a while. We'll catch up. I'm blessed. All of my immediate family is saved. So my mom, my dad has already died, my kids, my grandkids, my wife. Man, I got it made. And I'd be naive to think that you all are in the same spot. So what's that mean? It puts pressure on you, doesn't it? To take this second life of being born again that God has given us and make it shine so that others are gonna want this too. We can't be afraid to tell people that they're bound for a Christless eternity. And it's not a fun place to be. People need to hear that this life ain't it, because this life can be pretty sucky. And we're supposed to find joy in that. Without Christ, you're not going to. So this trials, the other thing to remember too, by the way, is that these trials that we're supposed to have joy in, they're not temptations to sin. Because God cannot tempt you to sin. So if you're tempted to sin and you give in to it and there's a consequence in your life that really is really lousy, that's on you. No offense, but if you sin, you did it. You're going to pay the price for it. And it's kind of funny. God's kind of cool in this way. Uh, if you're a Christian and, and you're acting like one, and then you sin, you ain't going to get away with it. <laughs> My son will tell you, ask him. He'll be here preaching next week. Talk to him. Ask him. Because all his friends used to do stuff and get away with it. He never got away with nothing. And he used to get so upset. Yeah. And so that's because God's called you for something else, boy. So through these trials that we go through, it produces faith and patience and endurance. Because of walking a Christian life sometimes can be hard. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that. Life is hard as a Christian. But the continual trials that God provides for us, we get more and more patient. We get better and better. We become more and more like Christ. And the trials don't seem all that bad anymore. And of course, it says uh, um, that we would be perfect. <laughs> no, we won't. The perfect here doesn't mean perfect like sinless. It means mature. I, I, I was thinking about it, it kind of like this. Um, when I was young and I was in college, I had hair down here. I had this big honking beard. Uh, I wore funny pants. We used to call them elephant bells. You guys wouldn't know what they are. Uh, I dress funny. Um, but today, I would never do that because I've matured. I did a lot of silly things when I was young, things that I would never think about doing today because I've matured. And that's what James is talking about here. Our life in Christ will help us to change to change the things that we do, we'll become more mature, and we won't do those sinful things that we used to do as we mature, because we'll see them for the silliness that it is. 
Thank you for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We'll continue with the second part of the message right after this. Act like a man. Woman, can you help me? 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14 says, Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. These explosive words could and should ignite a sense of responsibility within the heart of every man across the planet, or at least in the heart of you, the reader. You can purchase this book and others by Cedric Brown at cedricbrown.com. Thank you again for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We now return for the second half of our message. Okay, last point. It's a life of abundant wisdom. James 1, chapter 5, or James chapter 1, verse 5, which says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Now, my definition for wisdom is knowledge with feet. The idea being that we, we think of, of, of Solomon as the wisest guy in the world, but we didn't know how wise he was until he was going to cut a kid in half. That's another story I'll tell you later. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't use it, you have no wisdom. The idea here of wisdom is to grab the knowledge that we can from the Word of God and then use it. And that's wisdom. In this case, he wants us to use it to help us in these trials. It's the wisdom of God that's going to enable us to have joy in trials so that we can get endurance and patience so then we can endure more in trials and have more joy in trials so we can have... You you get the idea how this works. Okay, but it comes with wisdom. But where does wisdom come from? James says you have not because you ask not. Oops. If you want wisdom, you've got to ask. I like to explain it this way. Many of us in our lives have people in our lives that we could never forgive. Yet the Bible calls us to forgive as Christ forgives us. And there is nothing that we have done that Christ will not forgive us for. Therefore, we are to forgive everyone just like Christ does. But I'm sure that you right now are running through your head somebody that you'd like to rip their throat out. And I will say to you that that is a normal human reaction to the lack of forgiveness. So how can you forgive them, you ask? Only the Holy Spirit of God can work in your heart to tenderize it to the point where you can forgive the unforgivable. You can't do it yourself. That's where Jesus comes in. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. All we have to do is ask. The problem is, is a lot of times we like to be angry. It feels good. But if you're an angry Christian, you're going to have a hard time bringing others to Christ. Why are we here? Why are we on this earth? Why did God put us here? To be angry? Or to witness to his love and forgiveness? Without the Holy Spirit of God, you can't forgive the way he does. And we need to ask. And God, truly, if you ask believing in faith that he will help you to forgive, you will forgive. I guarantee it. Try him. Don't take my word for it. Try them. And it's the same thing with wisdom. We need wisdom to work our way through these trials and to find our joy. But if we don't ask, we're not going to get it, and we're going to be really sucky in these things that we call trials. We need to ask for wisdom to help us to endure the trials in a way that honors and glorifies God. All we got to do is ask. I'm going to give you four reasons to encourage you about asking for wisdom and why you'll get it. 
Number one, God is a giving God. And I think we can all attest to that. Just like we love to give to our kids, God loves to give to us because we're his children. Number two, God gives generously to all. He has no favorites. I am not going to get more gifts than you do. Don't work that way. God doesn't work that way. He gives to all liberally. Why? Because he loves you. And out of that love, he'll give to every single person here, regardless of who you are, just the same amount as everybody else gets. Number three, God gives without finding fault. He gives in such a way that it's not to humiliate us. And I always like to think about that. Um, he could give in a way that embarrasses us. Uh, <coughs> I mentioned in the last service, uh, a lot of times I'll pray and ask God to reveal to me my sin. Because I know there's stuff in there that I haven't dealt with, that I need his help to reveal it to me so I can repent of it and move on. But I always, in the back of my head, am scared to death that I'm going to be riding down the road one day and this big billboard is going to say, Ken Jones did this, you sinner. And I'm going to be all embarrassed and upset because everybody knows what I did. And I'll be quite upset. But God doesn't work that way. God doesn't give you gifts to humiliate you. He doesn't give you wisdom to humiliate you. He just loves you. A wise person listens to instruction, Proverbs 13, 1, respects God's commandments in Proverbs 9, 10, and avoids immoral companions. And if you want to, read Proverbs 7, Proverbs 7, 6 to 23. I won't read it all for you. But it's pretty clear. If you want to have wisdom, bad company corrupts good morals, it says in Corinthians. God promises to answer those who come seeking wisdom. Look at 1 John, please, chapter 5. I'm going to end with this. 1 John, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. It says, This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. So the first concept is, number one, if there's sin in your life, he's not going to hear you. So the first thing you need to do is ask for forgiveness and repent of your sin. When you do, he'll hear you. And then know that if you're praying and he hears you, you're going to get it. If you don't believe that you're going to get what you've asked for from God, why are you wasting your breath and his time? He will answer your prayer and give you what you want if it's in his will. You have to believe it. Because if you don't believe it, he's not going to do it. Because there's no faith. We have a first life. You're born. You're born in sin. Those of us that came face to face with Jesus Christ and trusted in the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary have a second life. And we have a duty to live it in a certain way. And really for one wonderful, beautiful, holy purpose, to lead others to Christ to show the world Jesus Christ. For those of you that have the fun of watching the news every once in a while, and you see all the stuff that's going on out in the world, you realize you have the answer? You could solve all the world's problems. Because Jesus is the answer. The problem is it's a world without Christ. 
and we can't sit here in our, in our beautiful church and hoard it all to ourselves. We need to run out those doors and tell people about Jesus. And the easiest way to do that is to show them. You don't have to beat people with a Bible. <laughs> you won't get much of a response that way anyhow. They just need to see it in you every day, in your walk, in your way of life. They need to see Jesus in you. And that's how you live that second life. That's how you find the fruit of the Spirit, because you walk by the Spirit. And when you walk by the Spirit, God will fill you in. And he will just, just explode out of you. Trust him. Let's pray. Father, I love your word. And I love how it continually shows us, convicts us, guides us, leads us. But more than anything, helps us to see the love of Jesus. Father, help us. Please help us. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for walking in a way that we shouldn't. Convict us where we stand if we're wrong. Draw us to yourself. Help us to be more like you so that we can fulfill the law of Christ and we can love one another. And in so doing, Father, help us to be witnesses for Jesus Christ and for his finished work on the cross of Calvary that leads us all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hello, this is Cedric Brown, your teacher on Commitment to Truth. I would like to personally thank you so much for tuning in week after week to listen here on this station. My prayer is that our time together is encouraging and strengthening you in your personal walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, I'm not going to assume that all of you know this Christ that I speak about week after week. And if you don't, and this is you, my prayer is that you are being inspired to know Him personally through commitment to truth. But if you want to invite this Christ into your life right now, would you like to please pray with me? It's just a short prayer. It goes like this. Just say, Jesus, I acknowledge today that I am a sinner and I've sinned against you. But I believe that you came to die for me. You were buried for me and you rose again from the grave just for me. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life to be my Lord and my risen Savior. And I surrender my life completely to you until I see you face to face. Jesus, would you, would you please empower me through your Holy Spirit to live the rest of my life for your glory and for the good of others? In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. So if you pray this prayer, or if you need help finding a local Christ-centered and Bible-teaching church, please email me at info at commitmenttotruth.org. Once again, that is info at commitmenttotruth.org. And lastly today, could you please do two things for me, all of you? Number one, could you spread the word about commitment to truth to your friends, your family, and even your enemies? We all could learn, right? And secondly, please email me at info at commitment to truth to let me know how this ministry is impacting your life. Once again, that is info at commitmenttotruth.org. I would love to hear from you. May God bless you and your family and have a great day. Thank you again for listening to our series, Life After Death, from Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. We hope you were encouraged to know that life after death is not only a life of service, but also of fruitfulness. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, we would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.